Glory and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we celebrate his birth and life this Christmas season. And for the viewers out there, have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Well, at least for me personally, this has been a, a, a very blessed fall, autumn. There have been challenges like uh, there are for everyone. Uh, I This fall, I announced my publication in Oxford University Press. That was a big deal for me personally. I was accepted into a PhD program in biomolecular engineering. And I was on Denver KLTT AM radio. And that was a big deal. I'm going to be in a New York Times article big New York Times article in three weeks. And I've been cleared to finally announce I'm going to be in a major, major documentary about McLean Bible Church and its pastor, David Platt. David Platt. As some of you know, I've been in an ongoing um, legal probe of McLean. And uh, I and my five fellow plaintiffs with uh, Chap Peterson, a sitting state senator and law professor, uh, spearheaded a legal probe that uncovered all sorts of wrongdoing, financial and contractual and um, reporting, you know, financial reporting uh, types of wrongdoing. And it's uh, we were victorious in being able to get all this disclosure. We got emails, we got transactions, we got uh, sworn testimony. It, it was just glorious. We still haven't gotten to the bottom of everything uh, like we'd like. Uh, perhaps we have just touched the tip of the iceberg. I think we've gone a little deeper than just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, but uh, there were a lot of days it seemed like uh, this is going nowhere, that uh, all our effort would just be going up in smoke, all the tens of thousands of dollars that were invested in uh, financing this legal probe. And by the way, I'd like to take a, um, a moment to express my sincere gratitude to all the viewers who have sent uh, donations to our, uh, for our, for our legal, um, for our legal probe. Thank you. Thank you very much. We could not have done it without the enormous generosity that was sent our way because we are fighting a uh, we are fighting David Platt, who was using a million dollars uh, worth of lawyers to uh, to try to th try to thwart our legal probe. Now, for the regular viewers and subscribers of our channel, talking about McLean is. Uh, not the regularly scheduled programming, the regularly scheduled or say irregularly scheduled programming talks about evidence and reasons for the Christian faith. And I hope to resume doing that. I'm pleased to announce that uh, I, I was in a debate uh, recently, matter of fact, just a few hours ago. Let me just show a little slide of that. It was Sal and Taylor versus Grayson and Amy. We were arguing uh, whether the origin of life had natural explanations or not, and the state of the origin of life. I argue that that is evidence that the origin of life, its improbability, is evidence that there is a God. And I think uh I can't totally speak for, for, for Taylor, but I think that is her view too, based on some of the things she said. I expect probably 10,000 viewers for, for that debate. Um, my last several debates have had about 10,000 viewers each. And uh, of course there was one last fall that went all the way up to 70,000. So it's been a lot of fun. Let me uh, just, uh, page through some of the parts of the the trailers for this documentary. The documentary, a lot of the filming was done about a month ago. 
we still hadn't gotten at the time gotten full you know as much release of all the documents uh, at the time, our attorneys had to comb through it just to make sure that what we were releasing, we were actually allowed to. There are still ninety-five uh, percent of it was uh, cleared to be released, but there's that five percent that the judge said, "No, you can't disclose that." So we have to be very careful that we don't accidentally um, disclose something that we weren't supposed to. Now, the five percent that we're not allowed to disclose. It has no material effect. The, the, the sentiment is we didn't need this anyway, which I'm very, very grateful for. We had no reason to fight uh, for that last 5% because it had no value to the case we were trying to make. All the things that were really, really important that were discovered in our legal probe are going to be released. Now, that doesn't mean that we found everything. There are many things that I felt that would have been nice to find something as basic as how much does David Platt actually make that is still kind of opaque. David Platt is notorious for, for uh, criticizing Americans for their affluence and uh, that they should be thinking about living the poverty gospel. And, you know, why is it that you're living in affluent communities and not in the ghettos and whatever? I, I you know, I, I don't, I haven't read the book, but that's, that's kind of what I've been hearing snippets of from other people. Uh, whereas, um, and I, I want to thank uh, Ray Fava of Evangelical Dark Web. He had alerted me to the fact David Platt, Mr. Poverty Gospel himself, had purchased the $1.1 million home. Now I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not against the pastor being wealthy, but I am against the pastor who says to his congregation, you should be poor. And he goes and buys a $1.1 million home. And then he charges $20,000 $20, to come out and speak and to tell people they ought to be poor. They're not serving, you know, kind of the guilting them for, for having money to take care of their families and to provide for their families in, you know, in affluent conditions. I mean, if you love someone, you want to give them good things. I, I, I'd say, you know, there's a lot of poverty that's not caused because of lack of generosity. That's something that's actually not covered. Uh, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of poverty that's uh, caused by corruption that actually makes it difficult for the right money flow to reach the people who need it. And um, I mean, I, it's beautiful to be generous, but the problem I had is David Platt is, is preaching the poverty gospel, but he's not living it. And uh, so this, this came out because I made a video last week and I, I just talked about a congregational meeting and how McLean is losing more money than they ever have since their peak in 2014. And Evangelical Dark Web, Ray Fava invites me to his channel. We have a discussion. He said, hey, did you know David Platt bought a home? I said, no, I didn't know that. And so all this comes out. And this is a relatively minor thing. The bigger thing is legal documents have come, legal documents from our probe that were discovered in our probe and shown that he did not tell the truth in the Lord's house. I mean, this is really bad. If you are a pastor that claims to believe in God, that means when you're there in a worship service, and you're preaching from the pulpit in God's house, you believe God is watching. You have to have some chutzpah to not tell the truth when you're up there in the pulpit and you're intentionally trying to deceive the congregation. If you fear God, you know he's watching, and you're gonna you ought to tremble about what you're what you're doing. It ought to bother you. And this falsehood, David Platt stuck by his guns on this. 
and he hired he he hired high powered attorneys paid them a million dollars to fight our legal probe paid the same attorney $750,000 to fight another legal probe that's still ongoing uh, that could go into the 2 millions uh, depending on how it it transpires uh, this is a lot of money to cover up statements that David Platt, this is a lot of money to, for David Platt to spend of congregational money to hide his wrongdoing. And his wrongdoing. And, and, you know, I mean, there's not a lot of reason. I mean, in the scheme of things, I, I could get some people a little bit upset about what's going on, but getting on God's bad side, so to speak, for something you did from the pulpit, uh, that's infinitely worse. And it doesn't seem that that seems to face him. So, I mean, does he, does he really believe that God is there and watching what he's doing and that God will judge him and that God may not uh, maybe, you know, the prayers to God may be hindered. There are many places in the New Testament, there are several places, I, I wouldn't say many, where where it talks about your, your conduct will hinder God listening to your prayers. Jesus said, if your brother has ought against you, reconcile your brother first, then bring your offering to God. Uh, it says in one of the epistles, I believe it's Peter, Peter's epistles. Uh, husbands, you have to treat your wives right, otherwise your prayers are, are are hindered. And there are probably other verses we could cite. Now, there's even a passage that is very frightening and disturbing in the book of Acts, where Ananias tells a lie. And it's a lie that really wouldn't hurt anyone wouldn't cause injury as far as I could tell. So uh, let's say I sold all that I had. Say it was $100 million. I'm just exaggerating here. Say it's $100 million, and then I give it all away to the poor and to the church, and I keep $1 million for myself, give $99 million to the church, the community, to the poor, but I don't quite tell the truth. Now, as far as the rest of society and the church, they'll say, hey, good deal, man. You're, you're such a generous, wonderful person for selling all that you have and giving it to us. And, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people say, hey, look, you, the guy exaggerated a little bit. I'm cutting him slack, but look at all the good that he did. And, and God is teaching in the book of Acts, you don't do that. You don't, I mean, something, uh, uh, an act that is generous as selling everything you have, giving probably a very large portion of it away, but just inflating the resume a little bit and saying, no, 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 I gave all of it away. And the Apostle Peter rebukes Ananias. He said, look, this was your money. Why did you have, why did you feel obligated? What, what gain did you have? To not tell the truth. Why didn't you just say I gave away 90%? I kept 10%. You're trying to present yourself. Um I I I mean he's like 90% good, but he was trying, Ananias is trying to present himself to everyone as some very, very pure saint. I mean, if he gave away 90%, I'd still say, well, that was close enough. That was close enough. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't require, I wouldn't want him to be punished for that. But the Holy Spirit was offended. The Holy Spirit was offended. And um, when Peter confronted him and asked him for financial data, so here's the Apostle Peter asking for a financial report and say, did you really give away all your money? And Ananias said, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Peter confronts him and said, no, you didn't. You lied to the Holy Spirit. And it seemed to me Peter was saying, look, 
that was really a dumb thing to do because it's your money. Uh, who alt I mean, does it really matter that you say, hey, I sold everything I had. I kept 10% for myself. Is anyone, I mean, does anyone really have the right to say you're a bad guy for just holding on to 10%? I mean, you've enriched so many other people's lives. Uh, hardly anyone, I think, would fault you for holding 10%. Peter's saying, look, dude, just just re honest reporting about your finances, and you didn't do that. Holy Spirit was offended, and the guy died. A few hours later, Peter confronts his wife. The wife repeats the lie, the lie about the finances, and she's dead. Bang. And fear fell upon the whole church. So I expect David Platt knows that account. That you don't lie about things, and especially from the pulpit. This, him going on a Sunday morning and not telling the truth about a contractual relationship that involves, we found out, have, have found out since, big amounts of money, like the order of maybe anywhere from two to seven million. Uh, <laughs> you know, I and the viewers may or may not be upset to hear that he didn't tell the truth, but he should worry, you know, he should worry that God was listening. God, God in his house, you have invited God to come to that worship service and you're going to tell, you're not going to tell the truth to the congregation. That's that's just, and, and you're deliberately trying to deceive them. That is just a big no-no in God's eyes. That's why I read that, that's why I've related that passage in Acts, in, in the book of Acts. Um, the same, you know, God, God hears what you're saying, even if it's not going to hurt, even if your little lie is not going to hurt anyone, it will hurt you. It will hurt you in your standing with God. So that came out of our legal probe. The, the uh, documentary itself will be released in 2024 sometime. I'm hoping just like early 2024, say February or March, something like that. The, the trailers are pretty good. One trailer is 10 minutes long. So this is giving you a feel for the scope of the documentary. The trailer is 10 minutes long. Uh, it's like, how big is this documentary going to be? Uh, <laughs> a 10 minute long trailer is pretty big. There's a smaller trailer. Both trailers are different. So I'm going to link them in the video description. And one of the trailers is hosted on a website called The Real David Platt. The Real David Platt. And um, that can't sit too well with my pastor because now when people Google David Platt, there's a higher probability they're going to get um, the documentary that involves me. Uh, now, I, I think there are probably at least somewhere in the ballpark, a 20 people interview. And I was just one of the interviewees there. They did use footage that I had, that I had developed and broadcast on this YouTube channel. And I'll show you some of those clips because I recognize them. So let me see, see if I could find it. All right, so this is from, okay, this this is from uh, one of the trailers that is on John Harris's website. John Harris is involved in the production. So let me show you this. Uh, maybe I didn't do that right. Let me try it again. Uh, actually, this was on another website, but this was something that uh, I clipped out. And let me see if I could find it. Um, hang on, I have to know how to do this. So I screen share and I say share sound. And David Platt here in this video, he's going to ask for $60 million from the congregation. And you'll just see how his eyes light up. Um, 
he's saying, uh, he's asking for money. He said, if you're being biblical, you're going to give $60 million a year to the church. And and he, his eyes just light up. He says, just, just dream. Just dream about all we could do with that. <laughs> it was so funny. So um, let me see if I could. Okay, I can't get it to the exact timestamps, so I'm going to start playing it now. Hang on. Never got a response, just like everybody else. We had a 20 plus million dollar budget. You are actually giving the article right. is it's immutable. I had written to the Board of Elders about many of these issues. Never got a response, just like everybody else. We have a 20 plus million dollar budget. If we were actually giving the way God is calling us to give, our budget would easily be two, three times that as a church. Just dream of all we can do. So Abby wakes up. Just, just dream of all we could do with $60 million a year. $60 million a year. Dream about all we could do. <laughs> you know, sixty million dollars a year is a lot of money. Just, just dream about all we could do with that. Um, and there was a clip. Okay, so I aired that on another YouTube channel of mine. But uh, let's see if I could find the. Oh, let's see. It's here. Um. Okay, so all right. Oh, one nice thing is you'll get to see Dr. Sandy Pigeon in this documentary too. You've seen him on this channel. So uh, you'll see clips of Dr. Critical race theory preached from the pulpit. Critical race theory really kind of caused confusion for me. We have 106 different nations represented in McLean Bible Church. Pigeon. I've been there doing personal security work since 2012. I would take a bullet for anybody in that church, anybody. And you're going to turn around and say, I'm inherently racist? It's difficult for me uh, sometimes not to just torch like all white people because in particular, particularly white evangelicals and Christians. Mike Kelsey has been handpicked apparently. And you're going to turn around and say, I'm inherently racist. It's difficult for me. Okay. You can see me right here in the corner because the video was taken um, from my YouTube channel. And this is going to be in the documentary. So there's yours truly there. Uh, there are, I'm very not photogenic. Uh, there's our beloved attorney, a state senator and law professor. Chat Peters. When we first got involved, we thought that the financial commitment between McLean Bible and the Southern Baptist was approximately $300,000, which is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but... $300,000 was not even a drop in the bucket. It turns out that it was 10 times that, maybe 20 times that. <laughs> yeah, um, so, I mean, look. There was money that was inappropriately funneled to organizations that I think are corrupt. Some of it was put to good use. Praise God for that. Some of it to questionable. Somewhere in the range of two million to six million to, to seven million or so that we know of so far. We're continuing to probe to find out if there is more. But you add the $1 million of cover-up that was spent to fight our probe, which McLean lost, and maybe another million dollars to fight another probe that's still ongoing, and we don't know how that probe will end up. That has to do with election rigging, as if McLean doesn't have enough problems. And then you talk about David Platt uh, just kind of lining his pockets to finance his lifestyle. I... Yes, the men I've heard is he probably makes half a million a year, and he's been at McLean uh, for six years. So that's, what, $3 million? Uh, you paid an executive-level pastor to come here, destroy the church. And by the way, I think he's gotten a raise 
despite the the church attendance going down, his his income has been going up. And and uh, then you look at the lost revenues, the lost level of donations. That's in the tens of millions of dollars at this point. This is this is this is a disaster of epic proportions. Uh, and, and so this is why the documentary is just kind of, a, I, I guess, an, an interest story about a, a pastor that's not truthful to the congregation, that is willing to pay lawyers to protect his reputation for uh, all the things they shouldn't have done. Uh, and uh, it's it's very sobering. And this, you know, what is evidence and reasons for the Christian faith all about? Why do I have this YouTube channel? I. I have made some money from this channel, usually through private donations, not so much through from YouTube monetization. But it, it's not my major source of income, and I I feel obligated to give it for you know to to the public as as my gratitude to God. And one reason I do that is I've been disappointed that the way Christianity is spread is sometimes through celebrity pastors. It's like you get someone who can do a good act, act really sincere, and it kind of helps you believe. I mean, you, it's just the way we're wired. You see someone who's sincere, and um, he stands up there, and he looks like he knows what he's talking about. You just tend to trust him, and sometimes that's how faith is instilled in people. And I, I often said, you know, this is very... Uh, this is very tenuous. Wouldn't you prefer that people have uh, their faith inspired by a more stable set of facts? Like I talk about uh, using science to show that life was miraculously made. Um, one of the former pastors, Lon Solomon, that he got converted studying enzymes. Biology said Dude, these were amazing. Only God could have made that. And and then archaeology, and then um, the the testimony of changed lives and answered prayer. As you begin to meet people who have become Christians who came from all sorts of background, you begin to get the sense that there's power behind that. And and then you get to hear their testimonies of answered prayer. It's like okay, God could heal everybody, but but He doesn't. But there's still enough of these answered prayers, you think, hmm, you know, and then you start to experience it in your life. So, you know, whereas if your faith is generated by that pastor kind of putting on theater every Sunday morning, uh, that's, you know, that that's not on stable ground. And I, I found that in what we call the apologetics ministry, we really teach defending the faith with evidence and reasons that many times I found these ministries were treated as if they were in competition with the pastor. It, it, it felt like the pastor did not like people finding other sources of faith than him. Um, and then, you know, my experience at McLean Bible Church there is kind of confirming that. they won't, This is the idea of a celebrity pastor. It's all about him. And that's not really what the Bible teaches. It should be about Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, if you do not, it's very interesting when, when people were doubting whether Jesus, were questioning whether Jesus was who he said he was, Jesus said, study the works. Study the works. He didn't say, go find some charismatic preacher to kind of make you feel better on Sunday morning. He said, study the works. Study the works. So let me look at some more clips. Let's see if I could find anything. Uh, so more about David Platt, more about the SBC. There's Jeremiah Burke there. Talking. Um, yeah. There's the attorney. 
and anyone can watch this. I'm just trying to help you out, figure out who's, who's who. There's Chuck Wright, who's been a part of the church for 62 years. It's amazing. And, and at the end, it says, the real David Platt coming in 2024. <laughs> And so, so, so the movie, the documentary opens up. Let me show you where it was. I can't seem to find it. Oh, well, it must be. Let me go now to the real David Platt website. So. The room shall be proclaimed on the house. The real. TheRealDavidPlatt.com. Oh my goodness. They have a whole website dedicated to this. And there's an extended trailer. Okay. So let me let me play it. Hi, I'm David Platt, and I want to tell you about a new initiative in Radical called Urgent. David Platt. How much time do you have? <laughs> He's very charismatic. God. David Platt. How much time do you have? <laughs> He's a very charismatic guy. If he was running for office, the first time you meet him, you feel like you want to vote for him like right away. When David Platt came to the church, I didn't know much about him. Well, at first, I really liked him. I mean, he was so personable. Very good at question deflection. He knows how to get you to respond emotionally to him. He gave Romans 8 word for word. And That's the Hermeneutics 101 class. We all have them. David was teaching essentially CRT. There's where we're... It's difficult for me uh, sometimes not to just torch like all white people because in and of course, there's that infamous clip and oof, wow. Particularly white evangelicals and Christians. Mike Kelsey has been handpicked apparently by David to become the next lead pastor of McLean Bible Church. How is money being spent at this church and why are all these ministries being cut? Disciples are being made and churches are being multiplied all over the place. Laura asked David Platt specific question. That was an easy question. Just imagine in leading churches to multiply churches where we live and around the world. Our constitution says we're not allowed to like everybody else. Just got involved. We thought that out that it was ten times that, maybe twenty times that. What kind of boldness there is. Oh, to support a church planner. Through these we have explained and have in writing from the SBC, we're not a member of the Southern Baptist Convention seen it and thought it was an absolute joke. There's no way that guy wrote it. Uh, it had to be somebody internal from, from McLean that wrote it. Fake of accounting purposes. It was drafted by Dave. I saw a speaker. Oh my goodness, there's uh, yours truly. Dearest. I'm not photogenic at all. Uh, so I'm just paging through this and seeing some of my beloved friends in this video. Oh my goodness, the scary looking police officer. And let's get through it. Oh, that that's the Steve Gaskins, very honorable gentleman. Oh my goodness, there's me again. I'm so embarrassed. I'm not photogenic. So the real David Platt extended trailer. Coming out in 2024, and there you go. So uh, going to be some riveting drama. I, I actually think for 2024, things are going to quiet down for me. I, I hope they quiet down because I've got way too much going on. Uh, so once that trailer comes on, I'm going to get go back to my boring life of doing nerd torture sessions, um, talking about heavy electron quasi-particles and biochemistry and binomial distributions, just kind of the usual nerd stuff. Uh, the, this 
this autumn has been kind of a uh, big drama time. So with that, I don't think I have much of anything else. It's getting late. I need to call it a night. I want to thank all the uh, viewers and subscribers who've supported me, especially the last two years as I've suffered through the McLean ordeal. But there's definitely light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and I, I feel already a, vict a major victory has been won because we are viewed as troublemakers for asking tough questions. If it turned out those questions had answers, we would have been blue in the face, embarrassed that we were just causing a lot of trouble for nothing. But it turned out we have uncovered wrongdoing. Uh, don't know if it rises to the level that the courts can get further involved, but at least in terms of ethical ethical issues, uh, there have been serious ethical violations. And you know, I and I believe, especially when David Platt was not telling the truth from the pulpit, there have been violations in the eyes of God. There's only so much that. I could do as far as, you know, I can't really punish anyone for lying and, you know, uh, not telling the truth in God's house and trying to deceive someone. That's something that God takes care of, as detailed in the book of Acts. So uh, that's not, you know, that's that's not in my jurisdiction. Uh, my responsibility is to try to manage my life uh, and my conduct as best as I can. It does say in 1 Timothy 5.20, you are to rebuke elders for their sins. And, and, and if you see it, you have to, you have a responsibility to tell the congregation, you have a responsibility to tell the elders what you're doing is not right. And let God take care of the rest. So, have a very Merry Christmas. It is now Christmas Eve. Take care and God richly bless you. Good night.